everyone, welcome. It's nurse attorney Lori Brown from empowerednurses.org and yournurseattorney.com. And I'm really excited to be here today on Hey Nurses, What's Next? How 21 Nurses Became Business Owners and Successful Entrepreneurs. So I am super excited today to bring you Kellyanne Schaefer. And what is so fascinating about Kellyanne is that she ha is a nurse but has nothing related to a nursing business and Not uses really. her nursing skills to build her business. So even if you don't want to do a nursing related business, it's totally possible. So let me tell you about Kellyanne. She's a skilled multitasking mother of four. Kellyanne Schaefer is the owner of Task Complete, a personal assistance errand and concierge service. Kelly made a career in nursing for many years as a registered nurse. During her tenure as a nurse, she honed her organizational skills and became adept at balancing a busy household while administering compassionate care to her parents. Who else isn't in that sandwich generation? Mm -hmm. She began witnessing an epidemic of burnout, um, burnout amongst not only nurses and medical professionals, but within the community as well. And too many people taking on too many responsibilities, leaving no time for themselves and their spouses. Many having no one to turn to for assistance or support. And with this knowledge and devotion to serving and providing assistance to as many people as possible with core values of care and compassion, Task Complete was born. Mm -hmm. um, in business today, she upholds a mission of giving families and busy professionals reliable and compassionate assistance so they can meet the demands of everyday living. This is accomplished through educational programs, seminars, and done-for-you services. In 2015, Kelly created the Concierge Academy, where startup concierge professionals learn the tools necessary to become profitable industry leaders. The Concierge mm -hmm. Academy is considered the resource for growing, connecting, and learning in the concierge industry. You can learn more about, the, about Kelly and her programs at theconciergeacademy.com and through her book, The Concierge Life, What You Need to Know to Build a Successful Business, Live Your Passion, and Change the World. I love this. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, yeah. I'm so thrilled that you're here. Because you bring a different, um, you know, everybody knows about legal nurse consulting and life care planning and some of the other things businesses nurses can go into but we really hear about something completely different so how is it that you decided to start your own business yeah so um, I took my love and compassion of taking care of people um, and um, through my nursing career um, I just decided uh, as I was there for a while you know we all go through the different versions of burnout and um, my soul was calling me to do something else. And uh, what's crazy is I used to say, well, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm only a nurse and I'm only a mom and I only know how to take care of people. Um, and so for a while, I didn't think I had any other skill sets other than taking care of people um, in the nursing field and being a mom and taking care of my house. And um, but what I realized is that all of those skills that made me such an amazing nurse, um, I could also use to just build a business of my own design. And what I love about it is that you're still helping people, but only in a different way, different people. Yeah, people often ask me, I'll never forget when I first started my business and I was going out and I was doing the local networking thing, um, which I had no idea what that even was. Um, and then I went out and I started talking to people about it and I told them I was a nurse and they were all shocked. They were like, oh, why would you give up such a great job to do this? And I was like, well, actually, I, said, I still get to do everything that I loved about nursing. Um, I just get to do it in my own backyard and I get to do it on my own terms. Whereas when you are out in the healthcare field, and you are around the confines of structure and bureaucracy and all that fabulousness, um, you know, they can find you to how to be and act and behave. And the thing that I went into nursing for, which was about 
providing care and compassion and holding someone's hand and having a conversation with someone was no longer allowed in my day-to-day -day shift because I mm -hmm. was required to do too much documenting, right? So um, I often, you know, in the beginning, it was a little hard, I'll be honest, when I was telling people, yes, I left behind this, this career that I spent years studying to become and invested so many years into. But the way I look at it is it was an amazing stepping stone to allow me what I needed at that time in my life. And then I was able to take everything that I learned and everything that I still love about what I did. And I get to still be a nurse without you know, using the nursing title, so to speak, and everything. Yeah. That I do. Right. Wow. So, how did you get the courage to leave your day job? <laughs> well, that wasn't <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, the courage to leave my day job, or oh, like many of us that were, especially if you worked in hospital nursing, which was the only nursing that I ever had any real interest in doing. Um, but I was burning out of the 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 day to day um, crazy of it, and it was again, it was more the bureaucracy of the structure, and quite frankly, the other nurses that I was working with. Yeah. Um, I worked amongst a lot of other nurses who they came to work to do their job. They clocked in, clocked out, and went home. Yeah. I was always the one that was there an extra hour and a half, two hours, um, answering everybody else's call lights. All that craziness, right? And so what was beginning to happen was I was starting to have that, that anxiety of going to work mm -hmm. and I would not be able to sleep, not the night before I had to go back to work, but like two nights before. And I, I and the anxiety began to build and it just over, it, this was actually building up for years. This was probably two, three years. And I would come home from work and I would say to my husband, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I could do this anymore. And he was always supported. If, and he was always like, well, what else do you want to do? You can leave your, your career, you know, your, your experience and everything. You can go anywhere. And I didn't really want to. Like, I didn't want to work in a doctor's office. I didn't want to work at a desk job. I didn't want to work for an insurance company. I definitely didn't want to do home care. Um, hospitals, and I had been an administrator in a nursing home for a time, too, those were the settings that I enjoyed. I actually kind of enjoy a little bit of the crazy. Um, so I knew that I didn't want to take my career in a different avenue in that perspective. And what ended up actually happening was it was two or three years in the making of me going, oh, I got to find a way. I got to find a way. What else can I be when I grow up? Oh, I don't know how to do anything. I only know how to be a nurse. I only know how to take care of people. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. And I just kept hoping and wishing that the idea would come. And then the idea had come for me to do this business. And what had sparked it, there were like these few moments in time. And anybody who watches this recording, you'll know for yourself, there's like these these sparks of something in your own personal life that have this bing bing that happens in your head that you kind of channel away for later. And you might not actually, you know, work on it in that moment. So my very first time was grocery shopping with like a kid in a Snuggie and one in a car seat and one inside a cart and one like hanging on the front of the cart and me pulling <laughs> one cart and pushing one cart because I had four kids and my husband worked long hours and trying to grocery shop with four kids which was living hell. It was amazing. And I loved every moment of it, but it was kind of crazy. Yeah. And like that moment, I was like, there has to be a better way. And then in my day to day in my career, um, and I had worked in inner city hospitals. So it was a very different um, experience than most people have. But we would discharge patients all the time who didn't have people at home. They, their biggest concern after hip replacement was who was going to walk the dog. Um, how was, how were they going to get their medications filled? Who, who was going to bend over and change the litter box? I mean, the things that everyday people sort of kind of take for granted. So that had left this little nugget in my brain. And so I kind of compiled all these things and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start a business where I can just do shit for people. Right? <laughs> like, I just want to, I just want to help people. I just want to take care of people, whatever that looks like for them. Mm -hmm. And with, with the legal nonsense that happens in, in our health system, I did not want to be part of that anymore. 
So the idea had come and I shared it with my husband. He was like, okay, quit your job and start, start your business. Well, yeah, no, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I was afraid to let go. I had amazing be benefits, amazing health benefits with the best um, prescription plan that you could like imagine. Cause I worked in this big, huge inner city hospital. So we had amazing benefits and I was really afraid to unplug and the fear was holding me back from unplugging, but the universe always has a way of rearranging <laughs> itself and helping you actually get to your next step. And so what actually happened was, uh, the short version is I had been a floor nurse working 12 hour shifts. I ended up taking on a part-time um, educator kind of role. I've always loved teaching was always something I thought I would end up doing, but yes. I never ended up going into, but I had this opportunity to teach the nurses on my unit. I did that. I ended up creating almost like this role for myself on my unit. And I did that for about a year and a half. And then my um, supervisor was like, oh, we're having cutbacks. I got to put you back on the floor. Okay, I can do it. I didn't hear the first warning sign, right? Yes. Then, then she says, oh, by the way, um, the other nurses are getting um, a little ticked off that you're not doing weekends. So we need to put you back on weekends. So they put me back on every third weekend. And my husband was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, but I can do it. It's only every third. We can make it work. We can make it happen. And I worked 12 hour shifts, which actually meant 14 hour shifts. And I lived an hour away. So I was out of the house from quarter to six in the morning till typically 10 p.m. at night. And if I did back to back shifts, that meant I didn't get to see my kids for two and a half straight days. Mm. But I was going to do it anyway. And then what happens? <laughs> Ding! My, <laughs> my manager says, oh, by the way, your first weekend back, we're rotating you to night shift. And I was like, oh, hell to the no. I'm like, I'm too old for this. I've invested my time. I've done the whole night shift thing. I am not doing it. And it was literally the idea of having to go back to nights that I was just like, it was the push that I needed. And that's what kind of pushed me to do it. And I left my career in nursing to start my business. Um, but I will tell you that for the next three weeks, I sat and cried every single day because mm -hmm. I felt like I had no purpose. It's because like a death. Everything you've known. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I yeah. want to touch on a couple of the points that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. The first, I just want to ask our viewers, how many of you see yourself in, in Kelly? How many of you? Because her story is so very familiar to all of us. And then the second thing I want to talk about is how you get these signs and you don't pay mm -hmm. attention to them. <laughs> and, and then and it only gets worse. And then they come see me with the license protection issues. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I can't even imagine what happened to you, what would happen to your health, your well-being, your license, had you stayed. Mm -hmm. um, but we've known each other for many years, and I've watched you grow incredibly, and you've done amazing. So can you share with our viewers what it's like on the other side? Yeah, so on the other side now, I will tell you that here's one thing that I would love to just share for anyone watching this is on the other side is more than just a paycheck. It's more than just an income. And that was the thing that I had to really, really learn um, because when I started my nursing career, I was a single mom. I actually was, I actually worked night shift and went to school during the day, raising a three-year-old on my own with no husband, no child support, anything. So I bust my buns to get that career. So everything I always knew was kind of like survival, like money mm. equated to survival. Mm -hmm. And so my business, when I started my business and in the beginning, like it does, it takes time. It takes time to bring your clients in and it takes time to put yourself out there. Um, but one of the things that I was not doing was I was not understanding actually the full compensation package, if you will, yeah. of being a business owner. 
And so being a business owner, I no longer have to work Christmas. I never have to work Christmas again. I never have to work Thanksgiving again. I get to take off for three weeks in August and I don't need approval for that. I can take off over the holidays and we weren't allowed to take off between December 15th and January 15th because of holidays. I never have to ask permission anymore. Um, I bust my butt every day. But if my kids, if there's something important that I don't want to miss, I don't have to miss it. I can be here to tuck them in. Now my kids are older and they're grown and two are out of the house and I only have two left in the house. But it's more than just um, money. It's money and so many opportunities and so many experiences and meeting people and all of the fringe benefits that actually come with not just owning a business, but also putting yourself out there. I've been, um, I was just talking to someone about this the other day. I actually was part of a, a, a three book series that, that all three books became international bestsellers on Amazon. That would have never happened if I was still in nursing. And so my stories in these books actually help transform people's lives all over that I'll never even meet. So it's always just amazing, especially if you have just that heart and soul for compassion, which is really the root of all of us. Um, anything that you do, you can impact somebody's life. So what nursing skills do you use to, even though your business isn't nursing related, what business skills, what nursing skills did you use that translated into starting a business? So I would say definitely prioritization, right? You walk on the floor, who needs you first? You know, airway, breathing, circulation, right? You look, you look at your business with that same um, overview, airway, breathing, circulation, like what, what's going to die if you don't give it air, right? <laughs> um, so prioritization, um, leadership skills, learning how to be a leader in your household, in your business, in your community, how to be a good public speaker, um, how to educate people, um, because I was always about educating, and I think learning how to be a good educator, whatever it is that you sell, whatever business you go into and business model you go into, you have to sell. The way you sell is through educating. Um, being able to connect with someone heart to heart, great listening skills. Um, geez, I think the list just goes on and on and on. And honestly, care and compassion and empathy for what your target audience and what your ideal client could possibly going through. And just learning to listen to someone with empathy, whereas there are other people out there that just don't have that skill set innately in them. So I hope what you're hearing is that you have everything it takes to start a business. Okay. And the other thing I hope you're hearing is that if you have a desire for a business, you can make it happen. You mm -hmm. wouldn't have the desire if you couldn't make it happen. And that's exactly what happened to you in the grocery store. Yep. You know, you saw a need, you thought I could do this, but you were scared and the fear held you back. But once you worked past that fear, because the fear is always going to be there, you can make it happen. Yes. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, and there will be different layers of fear along the way. Um, you know, I, I started it all myself, and then I needed to learn how to ask for help. I will tell you, as nurses, we do not like to ask for help because we are smarty pants, and we know everything, and we are. We are so brilliantly smart. But if there's one thing I did learn, it is learning to ask for help and guidance and support because there will be things. You have everything that you need to begin and then you will bump up against some things where getting a mentor or a tribe or support in some way will help you shorten that learning curve. Um, that's definitely one thing that I kind of resisted a lot in the beginning because I thought to myself, hell, I went to nursing school. I can do anything, <laughs> right? And right. I could have. Um, but I was able to have faster results and a bigger impact uh, because I did ask for help when I felt like I needed it the most. And now you're the CEO of the company acting as the CEO, not doing the day-to-day -day stuff. 
Correct, which is so funny how everything begins to evolve. Um, at first, I thought that's what I was always going to do. And then I just realized that my skill set is actually above and beyond. Like I've always had this higher level thinking um, that in if I would have stayed in my nursing career, unless I would have went up that pattern, but I still would have always had someone looming over me. Um, I would have never had the opportunity to uh, discover what was actually possible within myself. So Kelly, you have a concierge academy. Mm -hmm. So could you tell our viewers what that's about? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so I started my business. It was, it's almost nine years ago uh, as of today, this recording um, that I had left behind my nursing career and then started my business three months later. And in the beginning, um, I, I needed to learn all of the business speak, right? Networking, marketing, what's QuickBooks, what's an Excel document, you know, all this <laughs> crazy stuff that I right. actually did not know. Um, and what happened was over time, I became very successful at what I created. And I created a multi six figure business, um, taking care of people in my own backyard, basically. And I have a team of people. I have employees, which I never thought I'd have employees. Um, and what happened was there were other people who wanted to build businesses like mine. They love that idea. They have a compassion and desire to just help people. Um, and they like to do things. Um, and I love to say that concierge of the world are the ones that love to just ooze in and take care of people. Um, and it's their gift. And so a lot of people started seeking me out and asking me, well, how did you get started? What did you do? Da, 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 da. And I would have these little conversations with them. And what became, you know, started out as a conversation here or there, built into a secondary business. Now I have two businesses. So the Concierge Academy is the number one resource for people who are building per, uh, personal concierge companies whether they're focused on um, individuals, corporate, um, senior population, all the different niches that are out there, and I help them successfully set them up so they can shorten their learning curve. And I'm all about helping people build profitable businesses and becoming industry leaders. And that's what the academy really is. The academy is like a resource hub, and I offer different um, programs and coaching programs. I do a live event once a year and yeah. it's my way of taking all everything that I've learned and now giving it to someone else and being like, here, you go do this thing too. Um, and what's amazing is because I'm still running my, my service-based business, I'm still evolving as well. And as I continue to evolve over here, I get to bring it over here and teach them mm. about it over here, which has been awesome. Wow, because your your concierge, the test complete, is location-based. Correct. Yeah, we okay. do actually have clients throughout the country, um, oh. a, small, a small fraction of them, because we don't offer just personal concierge. Like, one of our biggest um, service offerings is household management. So anything that you don't have time to manage in your house while you're out at work, we manage that for you. Uh, but we also have a lot of clients who just need more personal assistance. So things like booking travel, buying gifts, sending flowers, doing computer research, making phone calls, those sorts of things can be done from anywhere. So we do have clients throughout the country, uh, but 99% of our clients are local based. Yes. That is so interesting. You know, who, who wouldn't want to like get gifts for people or flowers or things like book travel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all sounds so exciting. Yeah, it's always, it's fun, especially if you're the type of person that doesn't like to sit still, <laughs> like I always was, um, likes and likes a challenge, um, likes to be creative and doesn't like repetition. So that's the one beautiful thing I think, and I'm honestly probably in almost all businesses, uh, but especially in, in my industry, you know, there, every client is different. Every request is different. Every experience is unique, no two are alike. So if you love variety, it's a great type of um, business to get into. It sounds like nursing, every patient's unique. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. 
You know, so what is personality you're going to walk into? True. <laughs> you know, you might have the grumpy Gus that you got to be like, ah, come on. <laughs> yeah, but, that's the one thing that we didn't talk about. The biggest skill that I learned in nursing that I use today is the power of the smile. <laughs> mm. Like when you were walking into that grumpy Gus's room who just found out that they have an illness or they're cranky and they don't want to get up and walk and the incentive spirometer is the worst thing in the world you could ever teach them how to use. And you just go like this. <laughs> you walk in that room, anything is possible, right? And it's funny because that's one of our um, core beliefs in, in my service-based business is uh, everything is done with a smile because we know how it impacts. Yeah, wow. So what is the biggest mistake you've made in your business and how did you overcome it? The biggest mistake that I made in my business um, was, there's a couple of them. Um, the biggest mistake though that I made was not niching down in the beginning. Mm. It's the thing that all the books tell you to do. <laughs> and um, of course, you know, most of us were like, you can't tell me, I know better, right? <laughs> and um, that was the one thing that definitely delayed my progress because your marketing becomes a little diluted and it's hard if you don't have a niche and you have five niches, then it's like you're marketing and talking to five different people and you're trying to speak to five different people. And so that would be my biggest mistake. It's actually the biggest mistake most people make in my industry as well they don't want to niche down. Yeah. Um, so if you are starting a business, start with the niche. Um, it's easier to do everything when you start small and then you can always trickle out. Mm, that, that sounds like, um, I think we've heard several themes in this, in these type of interviews I'm having. One is that most of us are serial entrepreneurs. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're idea generators and we want to do everything. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is we all make mistakes. And so just know going in, when you start your business, you're going to make mistakes. It's part of the learning process, mm -hmm. but we just, you know, hopefully those learning mistakes will be what you learn from and grow from, right? They're your biggest opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause you can't grow. You honestly can't grow if things are always going perfect. I mean, yeah. let's look at it, right? Exactly. Yeah, I always say that growing a business is the biggest personal growth. Uh, amen to that. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's all about stretching yourself, reinventing yourself. But um, again, I, you know, it's, it's great who you become in the process. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've given a, a generous gift, how to market your local based business, even on a shoestring budget, 20 mm -hmm. proven low to no cost marketing strategies. Yeah. Um, so could you tell our audience about that? Yeah. So any of you who are out there who are building um, a, a local based business. So if you have an online business, this might not be the right, you know, um, support for you. But if you're building a business that's local based and honestly, no matter what business it is, um, my my core people that I talk to are in the concierge personal assistant um, space. But if you have a local based business, uh, everything that's in that freebie um, is on point, totally relevant, and will help you market yourself faster without spending a lot of money on unnecessary stuff and ads that people try to sell you and, and all the stuff that people will tell you work, but it actually doesn't. Um, the, the biggest thing about marketing any business that is local based is you are local, right? So go connect in your community. But this free guide gives you 20 ways for you to do that with some really good ninja strategies as well. And I've compiled it together so it's really easy and you just kind of just go through the checklist. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. So <laughs> Thank you're you. Welcome. We will put the link um, below the video. So again, thank you. That was very generous of you. Um, I know when you said about people try to sell you advertising, somebody that I know bought advertising at the movie theater. And I'm like, who goes to the movie theater in the dark and wants to write down uh, a company name, a website, a phone number? So mm -hmm. I, I kind of felt bad for her. But um, yeah. You know, it's things that learning lessons. It's all learning lessons. It sure is. My my people, the same thing. You know, they were promised, you know, a full color page ad, 
you know, in the paper, it's going to be in front of 10,000 people. And I say, look, your target are busy people. They're not reading the paper. It's coming yeah. in and it's going right in the recycling can. I guarantee yes. it. Yes. So, you know, a $1,500, you know, full spread um, is not honestly a good use of your money, especially in the beginning. You know, yes. once you're established, that's a whole different story. Right. But I could talk about this for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I could talk to you for days, but we are running out of time. So I would like to ask one more question. Sure. And that is, what advice would you have for nurses who want to start their own business? So... What I would tell you to do is if the desire is there, it's a calling from within. Um, listen, here's the fact. Callings are given to us and they're like gifts from God. And if God gives you a gift in your lap and you don't run with it, he's going to take the gift and he's going to move it on to the next person. So that is for you. That gift is for you. And the thing is that honestly, there are so many opportunities in nursing right now that you could begin to take that idea and put it out there, starting it out as a side hustle while you have some consistent income coming in over here, working like one or two days a week or a per diem kind of thing and, and make it happen. Um, but just know that everything you have is in you and that everything that you became um, is here to serve you for the next level of who you are meant to be. Just go for it. Mm, beautiful. Um, a funny story. Years ago, um, two women were on the beach in Cancun drinking those co the coconut water and they said to each other, we should bottle this. And of course, nowadays, everybody, they didn't do anything, but nowadays there's coconut water everywhere bottled. So mm -hmm. if you have that idea, hurry yeah. up, act on it. You never yes. know until you do it. Mm -hmm. um, and you never know what's available to you or what's next or how life can be if you don't. Yep. And just be open, be open with curiosity. Yeah, definitely. And you're not going to, I know a lot of us have, our businesses have morphed and, and grown till we found like the right thing. And mm -hmm. that's okay. That's all part of the process as well. Don't feel like you have to have it perfect at first. We've all, um, like your business has morphed and grown in so many different ways as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And well, there were a lot of things that I tried that didn't work in between too. Exactly. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm not loving that. We're going to let that go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're passionate about it, I think that's the most important um, because you're the one who has to get up every morning and, 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 um, and do it and your passion will shine through and Absolutely. keep you going. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciated this and I know yes. our viewers will as well. And um, yes. again, feel free to get Kelly's gift or um, check out her website in the comments below. And thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun being here with you, Lori. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.